Hello, hello, everybody. And doing what I do, I get to help lots and lots of different people in lots of different situations with their shrimp tanks. So I want to talk in this video, I want to talk about three things that these are three important things. They may not all be the most important things, but three things that I think people need to understand when it comes to running a successful shrimp tank. And that is why having your shrimp tank stable, stable water parameters is the most important thing. And why is it important? And that has to do with how your shrimp molt. Then another thing I want to try to explain is shrimp tank substrate and why the super expensive special shrimp tank substrate probably isn't the best substrate for you, especially if we're talking about keeping cherry shrimp or neocaridinia. And then I want to talk about why having live plants in your shrimp tank is supremely beneficial. So let's get started. So, especially when you're talking about NEOs, stable, wa sta stable water parameters are far, far more important than having perfect water parameters. And this has to do with how your shrimp molt. Shrimp molting is a natural process by which shrimp shed their old exoskeleton and grow a new one to accommodate their growing bodies. Molting is essential for shrimp to continue to grow and develop throughout their lives. Water hardness and stability play a crucial role in the molting process of shrimp. During the molting process, shrimp will first absorb water and increase in size, causing the old exoskeleton to separate from the body. The shrimp will then begin to secrete enzymes that break down the old exoskeleton, allowing the shrimp to wiggle out of its old shell. Once the old shell is discarded, the shrimp will rapidly absorb water to expand its new exoskeleton and harden it. Water hardness and stability are essential for successful molting in shrimp. Calcium is a crucial mineral that shrimp require for the formation of their new exoskeleton during molting. In environments with low calcium levels or unstable water hardness, unstable right there, shrimp may not have enough calcium available for proper molting, leading to issues such as soft shells, incomplete molts, and increased mortality. Water stability is critical for, sex, for successful molting in shrimp. During molting, shrimp are vulnerable as they shed their old exoskeleton and wait for the new one to harden. Fluctuations in water, water parameters can cause stress, deformities in the new exoskeleton, or failed molts, which can result in, in increased mortality and poor overall health. Basically, your shrimp are going to suffer and die if you got water fluctuating all over the place when they're trying to molt. To promote healthy molting in shrimp, it is important to maintain stable water hardness and stability within the optimal range for the specific species of shrimp you're keeping. Now, mainly what we're going to talk about is neos, but we'll talk about some of the caridina too. Regular water testing, maintaining proper water parameters, providing a balanced diet with adequate calcium, and avoiding rapid changes in water parameters can all contribute to successful molting and overall well-being of shrimp in your aquarium. So again, especially, I got to point out, especially when you're talking about neocaridinia or cherry shrimp, that's what most of you guys are talking about, what my channel is all about. They can adapt to a huge, huge range of different water parameters, but what they don't like is constant changing back and forth. So you need to have a water change solution or process that you do that works for your shrimp. And depending on how you change your water, we're not going to get into all that right now. But all that plays an important part. So another thing I see and people ask me about, what kind of substrate do I need to use for my cherry shrimp? Well, and I know when, I, when someone sends me a picture and I see the little pellets of the special shrimp soil, I know they think they're doing, people are trying to do the best and they get the soil made especially for shrimp tanks. But let me explain why that is not always what you want to do. The special shrimp soils are known as active soil. And then you have your sand and gravel, which is we call inert substrate. There are two types of substrates used in aquariums, and they differ in their properties and effects on the aquarium environment. Active soil refers to substrate materials that have an active influence on the water chemistry and the parameters in your aquarium. These substrates are typically made of natural materials such as volcanic soil, peat moss, or clay. 
and they are designed to release or absorb certain elements and compounds into the water, which can affect the pH, hardness, and nutrient levels. Inert substrate, on the, on the other hand, refers to substrate materials that do not have any significant effect on the water chemistry and parameters. These substrates are typically made of inert materials such as sand, gravel, or rocks, and they do not actively alter the water chemistry or nutrient levels. Active soil can have a buffering effect on the water, helping stabilize pH and hardness by preventing rapid fluctuations. Inert substrate does not have a buffering effect on the water, and the pH hardness may be influenced by other factors in the aquarium. Active soil may require more maintenance compared to inert substrate, as it may need to be replaced or replenished periodically to maintain its nutrient content and buffering capacity. Inert substrate typically requires less maintenance as it does not actively influence the water chemistry. So basically what your active soil is, that is for pretty much you're talking about your caridina that needs soft water. With caridina, more people, more times than not, you're making RODI water, which is zeroed out, then remineralizing, and you have zero KH. If you're using this special shrimp substrate just in your tap water, your KH is going to completely use up whatever capacity that had right away, and it is making your water chemistry change. And with NEOs, we're not chasing perfect. In fact, NEOs are hard water, and they need a pH above 7, so... Any of that stuff is completely unneeded for neocaridinia. And I realize people are trying their best and think they're doing good getting the special shrimp soil or shrimp substrates. But for neocaridinia, that is completely unneeded and may actually be harmful by changing your water parameters. With neos, they just want perfect. Now with caridinia, water parameters are going to fluctuate, but we need that buffering capacity to bring the pH below 7 oftentimes below 6.5 and even below 6. So that is what active soil and inert substrate means. And while you have the special super expensive shrimp soil and it has the buffering, that's an active soil and changes your water chemistry. But with NEOs, you don't need any of that. Just your basic sand or gravel works just fine and dandy. So it is my true belief that live plants are the most beneficial thing you can do for your shrimp tank. And it will improve your water, water quality. Live plants can naturally absorb excess nutrients, such as ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, which are produced by shrimp waste and leftover food. This can help to maintain stable water parameters and reduce the risk of water quality issues, providing a healthier environment for shrimp. Natural hiding places, live plants Provide natural hiding places for shrimp, allowing them to feel secure and reduce stress. Shrimp are natural explorers and climbers, and live plants can offer places to hide, explore, and perch on, creating a more natural and stimulating environment for them. Live, live plants can develop a thin layer of biofilm on their surfaces, which is a natural food source for shrimp. Shrimp often graze on biofilm, which can provide them with additional nutrition and mimic their natural feeding behavior. Aesthetics. Live plants can, exec, and it can enhance the visual appeal of a shrimp aquarium. Creating a lush, natural-looking underwater landscape. They can provide natural beauty, color, and texture to the aquarium, creating a more visually appealing and pleasing environment for both the shrimp and the aquarium keeper. Breeding habitat. Some live plants, such as mosses, I believe in that. Mosses, man can provide ideal breeding habitats for shrimp. They can offer secure hiding places for female shrimp to carry and protect their eggs, which can increase the chances of successful shrimp breeding and reproduction. You got algae problems? Live plants can help compete with algae for nutrients and light, reducing the growth of unwanted algae in the aquarium. This can help keep the aquarium clean and reduce the need for chemical algae control methods, which may be harmful to shrimp. Natural behaviors. Live plants can encourage natural behaviors in shrimp, such as grazing, foraging, and exploring. This can help to provide a more enriched and stimulating environment for your shrimp, promoting their natural behaviors and overall well being.
So I hope with this video I was able to answer some questions and point out some things that people may not know. Like the stable wire parameters, if you're chasing perfect, you're going to run into issues. Neocaridina, like stable, not perfect. They can adapt to almost anything as long as it stays the one certain thing. Then another thing is the, the active soil versus just your regular sand and gravel. Basically, if you're just keeping Neocaridina, you don't need any of that expensive shrimp soil. Some of it can, a lot of it is good for plants and there's another, but it, you're gonna have the fertilizers and stuff and that that will get in your water column. From my experiences are bad for shrimp. And I think with Neocaridina, you're much, much better off just to use regular sand or gravel. Then live plants, live plants acts as, as a natural filter, connect as a breeding ground and mimics your natural habitat. So thank you guys for watching. Please excuse my voice. My allergies are kicking my butt and I'm super, super hoarse. Thanks again, guys. Bye.